We all have that friend who wakes up early to go get everyone McDonald's breakfast while the rest of us sleep in. This is your sign to thank them. And if you're that friend, this is us saying thank you. Just a friendly reminder that right now, get any size iced coffee before 11 a.m. for just 99 cents. And a satisfying sausage McMuffin with egg is just $2.79. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Welcome to Dear Prudence. I'm your Prudence, Janae Desmond-Harris. We're doing something a little different today. Instead of an episode of Dear Prudence, I want to share with you an episode of Choice Words with Samantha B. It's from our friends at Lemonada Media. So you probably know Sam B from her time as a hilarious news correspondent on The Daily Show, or maybe from her own show, Full Frontal with Samantha B. Or perhaps you know her from her live show, Your Favorite Woman, which she's been touring all over the country. In her podcast, Choice Words, Sam sits down with people she admires to examine the biggest choices they've made in their lives and the ripple effects those decisions have. Because she's not just pro-choice, she's pro-choices. The episode you're about to hear is with the one and only reality TV star Karamo Brown of Queer Eye fame. They talk about the biggest choices he's made in his life, his unconventional journey to fatherhood, and how he learned to stop living in fear. As you're enjoying the listen, make sure to follow Choice Words on whatever app you're listening to right now. The more you listen, the better choices you'll make. Money back guarantee. Good thing it's free. Now here's the episode and host Sam B. It can be so hard to choose to be positive when the world can be so cruel, so challenging. It's really hard to remind yourself to lean into love when so many other things need your attention. I'm thinking about parenthood. Parenthood can be so overwhelming on its easiest days. And it can be words that I'm not even sure I'm allowed to say on this network on its very worst days. My husband and I, we have three kids. But before that, we had two, two kids, two full-time jobs. Then we decided to add a third child. And at that time, our biggest concern wasn't space. I mean, it should have been. Our apartment was ridiculously tiny. One of our children slept in a drawer. It wasn't even money. And again, it, it should have been. Kids are <laughs> ungodly expensive. It was actually love. We were so worried that we would be depriving our children from attention and love by focusing on someone else. Plus the average number of kids per American family is two. And who are we to say that we're above average? But in the end, we realized something that I think a lot of people in this situation realize. Hearts can expand and accommodate. There's always more love to go around. If you are able to do so, always choose love. I thought about this a lot after having a conversation with our next guest. This is Choice Words. I'm Samantha B. My guest today is the super thoughtful and charming Karamo Brown. You love him from Queer Eye and his talk show, Karamo. And I got to talk to him about choosing love, choosing forgiveness, and choosing fatherhood. He tells himself every day that there is an abundance of love out there. And I absolutely love that. Take a listen and make good choices. Karamo, I am so excited to see you again. Oh, I know it's been way too long. It has been way too long. And here you are. Yes. No, I know that to realize that no one can see us right now, but you are in your studio for Karamo, right? Yeah, are you? yeah, <gasps> yeah, I am. It, it feels nice to be here. Oh, it <laughs> must feel so nice. You're, it's incredible what you're doing. You well, was, you, you know this process. Like, you know I what do. it is? It's like you, you just to be able to like be in somewhere and to have mm -hmm. a little bit of control and to be yes. like making sure your voice is heard. It feels nice. Oh, that is a good feeling. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. We have so much. We have so much to talk about today. And yes. one of the things I want to ask you about before we, as we launch, 
launch into this because this podcast is about choice and choices that we've made in our lives and big choices and small choices and something, you know, things that reverberate through your life that Mm. maybe didn't even seem like big decisions at the time, but actually were so impactful. So I want to talk to you first about your relationship to choice. How, what kind of a decision maker are you? I'm very decisive. I was just going to say, you seem like a very decisive. The sharp lines of your blazer are communicating. The beard, it just tells you sharp (laughs) lines. This is what it is. We're doing this and that. Mm -hmm. Um, But that that decisiveness, even within that, has evolved. Oh, really? Because I realized that early on, my decisiveness was a protection that I had. It was me being able to cut things off very quickly to say, I'm not going right. I'm going left because I lived in a sort of fear, fear fear-based place majority of my life as a child who didn't have a lot of stability. Mm -hmm. There was always an underlining of fear Ah. and, and decisiveness gave me the illusion of control. And yeah, it made me feel like, okay, I'm controlling my life. So I don't have to ever feel insecure or unsecure again, because I've just made a decision instead of realizing that sometimes the, the, the the decisiveness was an illusion and I really didn't have control. I was making a choice because I thought this is what would make me feel safe. And I realize now that though I'm decisive, Mm -hmm. there's a lot of thought. There's a lot of understanding of like, okay, how does this affect me? How is this affecting? I, I ask this question to myself always. Sorry, and not yeah. to go too deep. No, 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 no. This is so interesting. I ask myself, and I do this all the time. I yeah. ask myself, how would um, how would baby Karamo, how <gasps> would teenage Karamo, and how is um, Karamo now all going to relate to this decisive decision? Because baby me wanted to be loved and protected. Yeah. Teenage me was rebellious and wanted to fight back. And okay. present me is older and wants peace. And decisive decisions have to be able to make sure that they're aligning and healing and giving to all three of those versions of me, because all three of those versions of me live in me. And so my decisiveness is not the wall right. and illusion of control that it was before. It's now a thoughtful decisiveness. I feel like I relate to that in a way. Like, I feel like there's something about, you know, when you're going through, when there's trauma in your life, there's something about cutting people out of your life, cutting people out of your heart and you have to do it. Yes. Like a, like excising a tumor or something like that. You just have to make a move. Yes. Yes. But it's, it's that, it's, it's, it's that illusion of Mm -hmm. fake security. It's the fake control. And I didn't want to do that anymore. Right. And so, and now I'm just thoughtful about the versions of me that still live in me that need to constantly be healed and loved on and to be acknowledged Mm -hmm. and how my decisions affect all of us. And it sounds like I'm talking about myself as I have multiple personalities, but it's not, it's just, it's just baby, baby Samantha is still in there. Baby Sam is still in there. Yeah. And whatever happened as a chid and whatever happened to teenage Sam is still in there. Mm-hmm. And that one wants to fight and kick ass. And she <laughs> wants to, she wants to change the world. And, and adult you is like, I, I still am going to be both those people who want love and to fight, but I also want some peace and honesty and kindness and clarity and my decisions my decisions align with all three of them. Everything that you're saying so, so thoughtfully is what I see. And I'm going to, I'm going to come back to this point, but everything that you're saying right now is what I see in your show. Oh, your patience with people, the way that you speak so tenderly to them as they're in crisis or like trying to make sense of the different versions of themselves or yeah. whatever it is, the trauma that they're experiencing. I feel that mature Karamo coming to like acknowledge the past, yeah, but also try to like make a path forward. You're so sweet. I appreciate that. Like God, honestly, I really appreciate that. A hundred percent true. Thank you. A hundred percent true. You can see it in every episode. You. you really can see it. Um, is there a choice that you can look back on in your life that you think really changed, I guess, changed the trajectory of your life, maybe in an either in a very expected way or, or something very unexpected? I mean, there's two choices. Um, 
that I think really affected me big time mm-hmm. that were real choices that I know that I made yeah. and that changed the directory. Uh, one is physical and one is more emotional. Mm-hmm. Um, so the emotional one was the day I stopped living in fear-based decision-making and more abundance-based decision-making, okay. which was big for me because again, unstable childhood, sure. like things going on, you know, abuse in my household, um, daddy drinking and smoking too much weed. I thought everything was always going to be taken away. Right. And then one day I realized that like, if even if something is taken away, God and the universe and I will still provide. Like I, it, it will still come. I, there's, I don't have to be fearful that I'll be left out without anything. Like I, more will come. I, cause I deserve it. Mm-hmm. And I'm walking in line with, with truth and honesty that I, yeah. I'm going to get more. Like, so if I lose this job, I've never been fearful that I won't get another, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, if I, if I lose this relationship, I'm not fearful that I won't get another because I no longer live in that fear based place that I used to live in. And that was a conscious choice that I had to practice where I'd see myself staying in a relationship that was so that I knew I wasn't supposed to be in. And then I was like, come on, you deserve more than this. And there's an abundance of love out there that you're going to get. Right. And I would have to repeat that to myself daily. Karamo, there's an abundance of love out there that you're going to get. And it just, it took away the power from the fear. So that was the one choice that I made that changed the directory. That and is then, really, really good. That's a practice. That is a practice, practice that you have to practice, do. Practice, practice. And then when I became, when I found out that I was a father, mm-hmm. because um, my fa- path of fatherhood was a little bit, untraditional. Mm -hmm. Um, I let people into my sexuality when I was 15 Mm -hmm. and I had one best friend who wanted to lose her virginity, but she didn't want to do with her boyfriend because she didn't want to, he was older and she didn't want to seem like an experience. Mm-hmm. So she convinced my gay ass to have sex. <laughs> and I was like, why? You know, I'm a homo. And we feel like, come on, well, let's try it. And I said, okay, like being an idiot teenager. <laughs> and, and it lasted all of one minute. And then she moved away. Mm-hmm. And then 10 years later, she was like, surprise, here's your kid. <laughs> and, wow. and the day that I decided to forgive her Mm -hmm. so that I could have a better relationship with her and my son. And then also to take custody of my son change that choice, that choice, because I was like, I could live in the, I'm upset at you for not telling me about my kid for 10 years Mm -hmm. and what you did to him, what you did to me and all this stuff. But I was like, I forgive you. I forgive you. This is a choice. And I want to get closer with you. And then also I'm making a choice to, take custody of my son because you, I didn't, I missed so many years and I don't want to miss another one. And both choices deeply impacted my life. Oh, deeply. That is a huge choice. That is, that is, that is like a very, that's like a, that is next level forgiveness. Girl. And that is a, that is a practice too. (laughs) Like that is something is so intentional. Yeah. And so healing for you, so healthy for you to be able to do that, but not, that's not easy. It wasn't. And to be honest with you, I, at the moment, I didn't know that I was doing it for me. I, mm. I was doing it for, um, baby Karamo. Right. Who saw himself and my son right. who saw he's going to have issues about his father and not being right. there and issues of like his parents not getting along. And so, I was like, well, I don't want him to do what I did. So I'm going to forgive you for him. I got it. I'm going to forgive you for him. And then later on, when I got older, I was like, oh, that decision was really for my baby me. I wanted somebody to make that decision for me. I wanted the adults in my life to make better choices for me because I didn't ask to be here and I wanted that. And so I made the better choice for him because the one made it for me. And, and, um, and it was for him for the long time because she would, it would shoot piss me off. So right. <laughs> we we have we have a lot of different choice makings, even yeah. to this day. I love her to death. Um, but I would every time that would happen, I would make the choice to be thoughtful, intentional, and forgiving mm-hmm. because I wanted him to see better. You, and it worked. It worked. Oh my yeah. God. And how, what a gift for him to be chosen. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. To be so intentionally, I mean, chosen really. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. I see the adult that he's become and how adjusted he is. Mm-hmm. And I know it's, it's, it was that he went from seeing, feeling alone, feeling distant, right. feeling like isolated, feeling like things are going to always be in confusion to, mm-hmm. oh, people are choosing to be better for me and I'm priority. Right. And I see how he responds to life now. And I'm like, thank God. Thank God you did that. Thank God for you yeah. and for him and for your whole entire family. Right. That kind of limitless love is but i didn't know in the moment i gotta no, tell no, you no, I'm not, i don't want to sit here and be like i was some guru in the no, moment no, it was no, like no, no, no. ridding my teeth and being like oh just put a pay this off is... one day because i'm i'm so you know <laughs> have your career choices changed a lot since you became a parent how have you how have you navigated that world because your career has exploded obviously yeah well, you know, I believe in there's a bigger and diviner plan mm-hmm. that I'm like, I I always knew I wanted kids. Like when I was in college, I was like, yeah. I, want the, I, want a, I want a husband, I want kids and, yeah. and, and, and these things. Like I was very traditional. I still am very traditional. I still want marriage and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not for everybody for me, but I was, I was like, I was like, you know, the universe God had a bigger plan because if I would have tried now I wouldn't have like being able to have the, my son, like my son is 26 now, wow. which gave me the ability to now when to like, I'm still young. I'm, you know, I'm right. 42. Yeah. That like now I'm like able to travel and do my career. And as you know, these careers are demanding that I'm mm-hmm. like, if I had a toddler on my shoulder, right. I could, I couldn't do it. And well, I could, as many people do, but I'd be, I'd, there'd be so much guilt that I'd have to be working right. through and things that I'd have to be figuring out. Where now I'm like, okay. He he can I'm kind of go on that give. journey with you a little bit. Like you are. He's he's on it. Yeah. He comes with me where we do stuff together because he's 26. So right. it's like, you know, about to be 27. And I'm like, oh, this works. This works. We'll be right back with Karamo after this. The best way to learn a language? Immersion. Living where the language is spoken and using it every day. But if that's not in the cards this year, you can still learn a language the second best way. And that's with Babbel. I love how easy it is to use. And as a person who can be really self-conscious about making mistakes, I love that I don't have to actually talk to a real human while I'm still working on my vocabulary and my accent. Be a better you in 2024 with Babbel the science-based language-driven learning app that actually works. Don't pay hundreds of dollars for private tutors or waste hours on apps that don't really help you speak the language. Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are handcrafted by over 200 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. Babbel's designed by real people for real conversations. Babbel's tips and tools are approachable, accessible, and rooted in real-life situations. They're delivered with conversation-based teaching, so you're ready to practice what you've learned in the real world. Babbel has over 16 million subscriptions sold, plus all of Babbel's 14 award-winning language courses are backed by their 20-day money-back guarantee. Here's a special limited-time deal for our listeners. Right now, get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash prudy. Get 55% off at babbel.com slash prudy, spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash prudy. Rules and restrictions may apply. This podcast is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Let's face it, sometimes multitasking can be overwhelming. Like when your favorite podcast is playing and the person next to you is talking and your car fan is blasting, all while you're trying to find the perfect parking spot. But then again, sometimes multitasking is easy, like quoting with Progressive Insurance. They do the hard work of comparing rates, so you can find a great rate that works for you, even if it's not with them. Give their nifty comparison tool a try, and you might just find getting the rate and coverage you deserve is easy. All you need to do is visit Progressive's website to get a quote with all the coverages you want like comprehensive and collision coverage or personal injury protection. Then you'll see Progressive's direct rate and their tool will provide options from other companies all lined up and ready to compare so it's simple to choose the rate and coverage as you like. Press play on comparing auto rates. 
Quote at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Comparison rates not available in all states or situations. Prices vary based on how you buy. Okay, I want to go back to the start of your career a little bit. Okay. Yeah. When you started, you were the first, is this right? That you were the first openly gay black man to ever appear on television? Is that true? No, on reality television. On reality television. Okay, reality. that's the specific. Yeah. Because Rue was the first okay. ever, like, you know, that we saw. Ever, that was ever. Out. Yeah. And then... I was the first on reality television because no one had ever been on reality television. Did you know that? Did you when you chose when you decided to do real world, did you know that? No, I was a college oh. kid that was like, I can go in a house and get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're gonna give me like five thousand dollars to spend my summer in a mansion oh. with a hot tub. Sure, sign me up. I wasn't even thinking about like, let's be on this show and make let us know, increase yeah. representation I, in the TV landscape. Exactly. I want yeah, mm -hmm. I yeah, I want representation and diverse. I want people to no. I was like, I was like, so how much liquor is in here? Is Where there a there margarita be... machine? <laughs> Do because I get... I prefer I need a whole slushy machine. <laughs> exactly. Just for me. For my flavors. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh, okay. It is a truth. It is a truth. Oh, so, I mean, I gosh. found out later because after it was done, it was like, oh my gosh, like you've done this. Yeah. And um, it's wild because I remember when I shot this in 2004, mm -hmm. we went to a black gay club on the show as they follow you to clubs on those reality shows. Yeah. And nobody wanted to get on camera because the stigma in the black community and communities of oh. color was so much. And there were so many people that were still dying. I mean, still, you know, trans women of color died, high rates, mm -hmm. you know, gay men of color are still at risk. But back mm -hmm. then it was serious. It was like, you are getting shot when you walk around your corner that no one wanted to be on camera. It was like, I'd walk in a club and they would all scatter. And so I take a little bit of pride now when I'm watching like Housewives and like, there's all these gay guys on there. And I'm like, good, good for y'all because I, was, cause I didn't have that. There was no, <laughs> right. there was a, no one was really backing me up on that. Exactly. You're yeah, right, you're so. right, you. <laughs> okay. I don't actually know how it happened on Queer Eye, like how they cast it in a way, but how yeah. did you become the culture guy? Was that like, did you have a choice in the matter? Were you, um, I mean, it makes, I mean, of course it makes sense to me, but was that your, was that your goal to be that figure on the show? No. So, um, they were casting the show for a mm -hmm. year and okay. I came in the last three weeks because I was watching Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen and Carson Kressley, who was the original Fab Five, was yeah. on there and said they were rebooting it. And I was like, well, I'm gay and I need to be on this show and right. had and love the original. But I was like, I don't I don't cook clean. I mean, like, I don't I, I mean, like, right. I'm fashionable, <laughs> but I don't have a you know, I, I don't I'm not a chef. I don't I'm do, like not sure what my niche is. Yeah, yeah. I'm not my sure. Like I worked I worked as a social worker and for many years. I'm like, OK, I work in mental health. Like, right. Great. Like, I don't know how this is going to work, but I begged my agent to get me an audition. They said, no, no, no. And then this woman in cast named Gretchen said, well, as a favor, I'll bring him in. But what category does he want? Mm. And I was like, I was like, let her decide. Cause I don't know. Right. I mean, like I got kids, I can cook. <laughs> like right. I, I cook, like I know how to put together an outfit. Like I just really had no idea. And then I got, they decided culture because it was generic. And so that's how they brought me in. Okay. And when I got there, they were doing the chemistry test. Mm -hmm. So they brought in the, their top 50. Oh, and did you say their the top people, 50? Five zero? Five zero. Oh gosh. That was a chemistry, because they were going to mismatch. Right. And so we spent, we spent two days mismatching for the five. Okay. And uh, I remember everybody else in my category were all art curators. They were all Broadway, oh. Broadway stars, composers, because oh. culture was that. Right. And, right. and I literally walked outside and called um, my agent was like, so I'm no one here 
I'm not an art and I don't know how to draw and I don't know what to do. And he was like, well, do you want to fake it? And I said, well, you know, that's not my MO. Like I don't, I would fail at faking it. Right. And I was like, so I'm just going to tell them that like I work in mental health and just like see how it works and just do my own thing. And I literally went into the audition into that chemistry test. And every time we would talk about something, I was like, well, you know, as much as I would like to take them to a museum, I'd love to find out like, where did their trauma come from? Like what resources do they need? What happened? And I just kept going up and up and up in the casting and they kept getting rid of like art curators and everything. And then at the last rate, I was like, well, maybe this mental health thing is working. Maybe me being myself. You being yourself. Yeah, they told me later on, they were like, well, we decided that this was the fresh take we needed for this new iteration. Is somebody who's going to talk about mental health and get to the deeper conversations. It is brilliant because you were perfect. Yeah, and that's what changed. So the culture culture title just a throw over from the original one. Right. Um, yeah, they should change it like mental health or, you know, I don't know. Whatever they want to change it to. Honestly, watching the show makes me feel like all hosts should start off as social workers. Because, <laughs> like, you had deep conversations. You have deep, con- you have had deep conversations with people. And so much of the show was just about unearthing those layers. Yeah. Of, like, yeah. why people couldn't change or why people couldn't adjust their life. Why they couldn't move forward. Yeah. Well, part of why I believe the show has been successful is because people can't, you know, like changing your outer Mm -hmm. and changing your home will only last as long as your mind is there. Yes. And so you can get cute in the morning, but the minute that like something pisses you off and you feel depressed, you're not going to dress up. Yeah. You know, people sit in their house. They That's why we see every movie when someone is not in a space where they're happy or their yeah. self-esteem or emotions are down. They don't change their clothes. They don't do their hair. They don't. Their house becomes a mess. Yes. And so for us to be able to work together has been such a blessing because you need each component for it to stick. Yes. Because I feel like when people are stuck in those situations, it's because they feel they're not worthy. They're not worthy. They're not worthy of an exterior that looks nice. They're depressed. That's it. They don't feel like they deserve. Yeah, that's it. To live a high quality life. And that is, I mean, I feel like I feel that uh, on your show on Karamo. Oh, thank you. It is an extension of the work that you were doing on Queer Eye. And I think that that certainly holds true. Yeah. I mean, like on Queer Eye, people sometimes because, you know, daytime talk and Mm -hmm. also I'm not in the celebrity genre. I'm on the, you know, or political genre. I'm in, you know, regular everyday people that they come with real emotions and it's heightened. And then I have to give bring them down and help them to figure through it and give them a resource. Mm -hmm. But it's the same thing on Queer Eye because people people get our our cute five minute packages that have cute music. Yes. But especially with my category, they don't realize like. I mean, there's a season that I had a, a, a daughter and father. Um, it was in Philadelphia and the daughter was decided to leave the house mm-hmm. because her father just was like so strict and a Latino family. And he wanted her to be in the business and want all these things and she rebelled and ran away and he hadn't seen her. And when I brought them back together, the part that we cut out was the daughter came in and was like, you can't control me. I'm, I'm my own person. And it was, and he's strong. And he's like, this is culture. And they're, you know, this, I'm a Latino man. And you don't talk to your father that way. And it was like, he did. And then I got them to a place where it was like, here we go. We can hear each other. And then that's when we, as Queer Eye, start recording. Right. And you see, hi, dad. I want to, okay, I hear you now. I want to talk to you. And people don't realize for my scenes, I always get that friction. And so with on my talk show, you just don't get that cut out and put over and then pretty music put under. Right. You know, you you get that, you get to see the real things that happens in all of our lives when your mom says something to you and she triggers you or your boyfriend or your girlfriend, yes. your husband, your wife. Yes, it is. Um, me- it is very messy and very, very messy. heated. Yeah. And then I go back into my office because now I've made it that I do have that slushy margarita machine in, you need it. in great flavor. You <laughs> must have, you must have two different flavors, two flavors. at all times, and two levers to pull. I have a cocktail because we shoot six episodes, a, six episodes a day. You shoot six episodes a day? day six you must be emotionally like that's a lot of margaritas girl come come that's over a lot of margaritas come to my office that's, come to my office that's a lot. 
it takes something, it takes a lot out of you, I'm sure, because you really are, it is like, I don't think that, I mean, listen, like I've interviewed people, this has been my entire career, but you really, when you are dealing with people who are not media trained and they don't have like a veneer about them, they are just like raw nerve endings. Mm -hmm. And you are talking to a lot of people at the end of their rope. And that actually takes a tremendous toll on you, I am sure. But you do the same thing. And one of the things that I've always respect about you, and I, I look at you as someone I respect and I also oh. take from your your hosting talents, is that when it comes to like even like your political stuff, mm-hmm. like people are at their wits end and they are they're they're just it's raw emotion. Right. And the way you're able to navigate it to give people perspectives that calms them and gives them clarity is something that I admire. I just had to give you your roses because I think you're amazing. You know, you're amazing. Well, thank you. That is why I have a pina colada machine in my house <laughs> that is churning 24 seven. Do you know what I mean? Breakfast pina colada. Okay, let's done, get prepared for done, the day. Let's do it right. Done. Let's do it right. Who needs eggs? <laughs> Hold that thought. More with Karamo after one more break. The new Stars series, Mary and George, starring Julianne Moore and Nicholas Galazine, tells a story almost too outrageous to be true. But shockingly, it is. With next to nothing to her name and looking to elevate her social standing, Mary Villiers sets her handsome and charming son George on the path to seduce King James I and become his all-powerful lover. Trust me, you've never seen a mother-son duo like this before. The show is full of wit, scandal, action, and, did I mention, Julianne Moore? Something this audacious and sexy is as genre-bending as it gets. You won't be able to look away. Watch the season premiere of Mary and George now, only on Stars and the Stars app. This podcast is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Most of you listening right now are probably multitasking. Yep, while you're listening, you're probably also driving, cleaning, exercising, or maybe even grocery shopping. But if you're not some kind of moving vehicle, there's something else you can be doing right now, getting an auto quote from Progressive Insurance. It's easy, and you could save money by doing it right from your phone. Drivers who save by switching to Progressive save nearly $750 on average, and auto customers qualify for an average of seven discounts. Discounts for having multiple vehicles on your policy, being a homeowner, and more. So just like your favorite podcast, Progressive will be with you 24-7, 365 days a year, so you're protected no matter what. Multitask right now. Quote your car insurance at Progressive.com to join over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. National average 12-month savings of $744 by new customers surveyed who saved with Progressive between June 2022 and May 2023. Potential savings will vary. Discounts not available in all states and situations. So Karamo is taking the place of Maury, which was on the air for decades. What decisions did you make to ensure that you would that the show would have its own identity? Because it is very distinct. It's very different. Yeah. So ironically, I wasn't supposed to take I wasn't taking Maury's spot. Mm-hmm. What happened was um they announced my show and then he announced he retired a day later or a reverse. Okay. They were it already planned. You know how this works. It yeah, was already planned sure. for to announce mine. And then he decided he was retiring because, you know, he had done the thing. And then press was like, here's his replacement. And it was like, it worked out because, because of that, I did take a couple of elements that I did respect about his show, but did in my own way. Like, or yeah. one, one element particularly is that, I mean, everyone talks about like, you are the father or whatever. Um, but because of my own life with a paternity issue mm-hmm. and finding my child later on, I wanted that element. Right. And at first I wasn't going to have it on my show because of the fact that I was like, I'm not, I don't want anybody to compare me to Maury. Right. <laughs> and, then, right. and then people, and then people did it anyway. And I was like, well, no need to fight that battle. And so I took that element. The only difference is that I don't do babies. I do adults like myself who, who can understand what it means to have results 
um, from a paternity test. Mm -hmm. But I mean, like, again, I I also, when people said that, like, I keep my show different, like the difference, main difference between me and most people that's in this genre is I want resolution. Yes. And, you know, I want resolution and I want tools. And last season one, I gave out um, more, more therapy Mm -hmm. than NBC probably wanted to pay for. But I was like, I don't care. Like every episode I was like, at the end of it, I was like, can I give you, can I pay for therapy? And they're like, yeah, that now season two of my show, we've already shot two weeks. And, and I remember there was one episode where I didn't offer them therapy and they were like, so I don't get free therapy. Where's my therapy? And I was like, yeah, well, I'll give you therapy. You want therapy? (laughs) It's good. It's like a sign that you don't, I'm not offering you. It's a good thing. Yeah. I was like, I was, I was like, you did good, but yeah. Sure. We'll, okay. we'll pay for a session or two. Um, <laughs> that does feel like such a difference that you're like, it doesn't feel like you're trying to get people to throw chairs at each other. In fact, it's the opposite. Opposite. Yeah. I'm like complete opposite. I'm like, you got to calm down. Like if someone starts standing yeah. up and they start doing something, I'm like, no, no, no. I'm like, mm-hmm. it's okay for you to show your emotions and be a human being because we all have mm-hmm. them in our, our moments of like, we're frustrated. I've been dealing with something for 15 years and I don't yeah. feel heard or I, I don't trust you. But you got to get calm because unless you want calm, calmness and clarity, then we're not going to be able to get through this. Right. I, anyways, you're so great on your show, but you're so good at giving, you are good at giving advice. You are great at guiding people. I hey. think that's people who have walked through fire are always like really <laughs> calm and good <laughs> exactly. at like guiding other people. <laughs> who do you, like? Do you seek other people's advice when you're trying to make the big yeah. calls. Do you have a? I do. Who do you lean on? I guess or um. The, so I'm the youngest of four sisters, and and I was obviously my mother and father in their tumultuous life. I was raised by my mother because mm-hmm. by the time being the youngest, she finally got the courage to leave my father being abusive when my sister, my youngest sister, was leaving high school. So then it was okay. just she and I. Okay. And um, I look to them. They are my rocks. My you know, I've I've always said I don't understand how we ever thought God was a woman. I mean, a man. Right. I never thought how we thought that, especially when the only thing we know on this world is women to be able to reproduce other than trans men. Sorry before, you know, someone. But, you know, like women to be able to reproduce. And I'm like, so the thing that creates everything is a man mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. doesn't make sense to me. So <laughs> I don't understand that. Um <laughs> And it's always, it's, it's also what's given me my empathy and mm-hmm. what's given me my clarity is when you're surrounded in a household where people are willing to be vulnerable while also being strong, be forward while also understanding that it's okay to let other people lead. Like when you see just people who, you know, these women in my life that showed me, I just mimic them. I mimic right. them. I really do. And, the, and anytime I have something, I go to them and I say, check me you know, let me know where I'm at. Right. Like, cause I trust what you have to say. And do they check you? They're like, absolutely oh, not. A- absolutely <laughs> all the time. Okay. <laughs> it's only been in a shift, like maybe in this past two years where now they've been calling me oddly. They're like, the, you're the patriarch of the family now. Like I'm Ooh, the oldest, I'm the oldest right. boy out of all the cousins. So they're like, you know, you got to handle this now. And I'm like, girl, when did this happen? I'm okay with y'all handling it. Like y'all been doing a great job, and, you know, but, um, but now they're checking me. They're not checking me as much, but they love to check me and tell oh, me like, okay. And I have a sister who is a counselor. Um, she's a PhD and she loves to critique my advice all the time. Oh, really? <laughs> she loves to be like, so um, you were right, but you know, clinically speaking, you could have probably went a little bit further oh, here. And I'm like, thank you for educating me. She thinks she's reading me, but she also just makes me better. That's amazing. So yeah. one of the things that I think you're also so incredible at is getting men to be so vulnerable. Mm. Okay. Like we obviously as a country reckon with misogyny and Ugh. sexism and all kinds of garbage patriarchy all the time. And so much of that, I don't know, feels like it's the, because men are just conditioned to like, not all men, but you know, a lot of them yeah. are just conditioned to like, hold it all in, like suck mm-hmm. it in and try to ride through every situation on a white stallion and save the day. And it just doesn't work at all at all. Not wanting to appear emotional is like, it's a crisis. (laughs) 
Yes. It's a crisis. Yes. How do you break through to men in particular? I mean, is it becoming easier the more that you do it? It's very tricky. I think for me, it's become easier because now men know I'm a safe space to do it. Okay. So um, we have house parties and you can always catch a guy in a corner crying with me. I'm not even joking. <laughs> not even joking. Like my girlfriends would be like, where's my, where's my husband? And they're in a corner somewhere, uh-huh. like on my shoulder. And I'm like, it's okay. I'm okay. I got it. Like, <laughs> sometimes I just don't want to be the hero. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, and I'm like, okay, baby, it's okay. But I think I think the steps for men that don't know my career and don't know me that I interact with is a lot of times the first thing I tell them is not to be afraid of the dictionary. Meaning, like these terms of like patriarchy, um, vulnerability. Mm-hmm they have a connotation in their mind, a definition that they put in their mind that they feel like it's now going to define them. And I'm like, don't be afraid of these definitions. Like, let's explore what it actually just is for you, you know? And this is for everything. People get so afraid of definitions that then they start to make that their battle. And that's that's the hill they want to die on. It's like, stop being afraid of the English language. It's okay. It, are, it existed. It was there before. But let's talk about what it could mean for you. And I think once I get them to understand that, like, patriarchy in these words, yes, it's a word. Mm -hmm. And yes, you've benefited or yes, you've exhibited it. Doesn't mean that it doesn't mean you can't grow through it. Doesn't mean that you can't be better. Doesn't mean I'm going to define you. Doesn't mean that I'm not going to allow you to be better than that moment that you had where you did subscribe to it. That I then see the first brick in that wall go down. Um, Then I start to, I do a sort of a reverse psychology of like, um, what are the expectations that the women have for you in your life that that you don't like mm-hmm. or that they uphold when it comes to this patriarchy? And it, it's it's not that I'm actually accusing or putting it on the women. What it is, it's making them to start explore that the same way that you're saying that this other sex has these things, you have certain things too that you feel like are pressure that you have. Obviously, your pressures are not as bad but it doesn't matter right now. We're not comparing or contrasting. What I'm doing is allowing you to say like, well, yeah, sometimes I don't like to be the one that has to, like you just said, you know, be that hero. I don't like that, you know, she tells me that I can't do this or I can't do that because if I do, then, you know, it's, you know, like a lot of men feel like they get mixed messages. Obviously women have been experiencing that their entire lives. You know, So it's like, woe is you, but I'm going to give you a space to express it. Because for me, I'm not going to chastise you for having your feeling. I'm going to allow you to feel safe. But once you feel safe enough to express it, now it's time for you to grow through it and understand why you have that feeling, why it's detrimental, and how you can be better than that feeling. It's okay to or have feelings. how you can feelings. be better. But you got to be better. You got to be better. better. <laughs> you got to be better. You got to be better. Like, let's let's explore the choices, you know, to go back to what we originally talked about. Well, how do you explore the choices you've made and, and how do you be better than those? And um, yeah, and it, it's working. It's very, very hard to f- solve a problem if you can't articulate it, don't you think? Yes. If you can't say the problem out loud, yeah, you can very rarely fix it. But most men are afraid to, again, afraid because they're afraid of the dictionary. Yes. They, they don't want to define it. They don't want to say it because if they own it, then they're a problem and they don't want to. And it's like, you got, don't be afraid of that dictionary. Right. I mean, we're, there's an episode on Queer Eye that from this past season, I'm very proud of, of I, we work with a frat mm. and they asked me at the beginning of the episode, like, are you going to take one person? What, who do you want from the frat? And I was like, no, I'm gonna take the whole, I'm gonna take a whole group. I've been, mean, all of you. Yeah, I've been doing group sessions forever. Like I know how to do this. And we're sitting with these boys and I was just asking them like, what is it? The first question I asked was, what does it mean to be a man? And they're like, they were like going into these definitions. And I was like, they were all wrong because they were afraid of like, just the regular definition is that it's just your chromosomes. Right, right. <laughs> and we're not, and the, all these other things that you've added on, none of these are what it's supposed to be. It's, you're talking about chromosomes right now. And I'm, and I'm talking about chromosomes and you're talking about feelings and and expectations. Now let's challenge those. And like having these nine boys in a circle crying 
Oh. Because they let go of what it was to be a man. You made so many spouses, future spouses' lives <laughs> better in that That's moment. <laughs> That's a hope, girl. That is a hope, lady. That's that a, a huge, hope. that's a mission going into a frat house mm. and being like, no, no, no. They're like, which, what, which one of us is, has issues? You're like, every single one of you get downstairs right now. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I it's, it's one of the proudest moments I've ever had on TV, seeing mm. these young men cry and open up and, and, experience of vulnerability in a public and together right. and know that it's okay to talk about it. And oh, Jesus, I'm proud of it. I'm proud. More of this, please. More, More of this, please. More. You know, you and uh, activism, so natural to you. I mean, you do a lot of work across a lot of different spaces, but, and it's more bar bipartisan than you might expect. Yeah. You've met with Karen's Karen Pence. Yeah. It was her, um, her chief of staff. Okay. What makes you decide to, what makes you able to, I think I know what makes you able to reach across the aisle like that. You're just calm. You see the goal. I see the goal. You see the end goal. I see the end goal. Yeah. I see the end goal. And plus, you know, I really, to be honest with you, I never had a choice. You know, when you're black, gay, immigrant parents, like I'm first generation American, my parents come from this country. Mm -hmm. I had no choice but to reach across because otherwise people weren't going to reach across to me. Right. And um, I, it, that's literally what it was. It was like, well, I know that if I sit here and, and die on my hill, I, I it's not going to benefit me. And it's definitely not going to benefit for the other people who don't have the access or privilege that I have. So I might as right. well go try to talk to them because, you know, like whatever, I'm not going to like allow you to hurt anybody and I'm not going to allow you to do things. But like, if we can find some common ground, like why not, you know? And it's come back to bite me in my ass a couple of times, you know, like uh, people have been like, he's a traitor. We hate him. Listen, there's no, without, you know, without risk, there's no reward and you can't listen yeah. to people. You can't, there's a lot of armchair critics, a lot of armchair yes. quarterbacks yeah. at all times. Exactly. And I, and I understand it. I get it. You know, people, you know, they're, we're, we're in a tense moment where it's like, mm -hmm. well, are you about to flop? Are you about to, start, are you about to start, you know, doing some stuff that it's like, are you about to put on a hat that we're all like, <laughs> hold on, you know, like, Wait. you know, we've seen it where you're like, hold on. Like, yeah. Like I've stopped wearing all of my red baseball caps. Like I love a baseball cap and I've stopped wearing all of the red ones because I'm like, I don't want anybody from the back to be like, what does it say on the front? Oh, you cannot wear red baseball caps have, I you can't. just can't for a, a long time. <laughs> Done. It's gone. It's gone. I to, I'm like, they're gone. They're in the back collecting dust now. Yeah. But, um, I do it because I know that if I don't put myself in that position. And I believe that part of what I'm on this earth to do mm -hmm. is to, I can handle it. I can handle it. I've gotten the tools. I've gotten the skills. I can handle it. And I don't put anything on myself that I can't handle. So if I can handle it and it's going to help somebody else be a little bit better, then God, let's just keep walking through this fire because why not? Damn it. That was great. <laughs> this is the, I, I have enjoyed talking. I always enjoy talking to you, but this was, this is chef's kiss. Yes. I enjoy you thoroughly. I think you make the, the world is a better place because you are in it and you're just a calming, you're just an incredible person. And Thanks. What a, what a damn pleasure. I got to tell you, I feel the same way about you. And this is not this is not fake talk. Like yeah. I meant it earlier when I said I watch you and I'm just so amazed by what you do as a host, as um, someone who shifts culture. You you are someone I respect and revere and let's look up to. And so this the feeling is more than mutual. Oh, you're amazing. Thank you so much. That was Karamo, and I had no choice but to look up one thing. He really made me want a slushie. So I had to know, who do we think for slushies? Well, it all goes back to the 1950s in Kansas when the soda machine at a Dairy Queen stopped working and its owner put all the Cokes in the freezer and then sold them half frozen. <laughs> it was a hit. I mean, obviously, that shit is delicious. Case closed. 
And good news, there's more choice words with Lemonada Premium. Subscribers get exclusive access to bonus content like a funny outtake from my recent interview with Eric Andre. Subscribe now in Apple Podcasts. Thank you for listening to Choice Words, which was created by and is hosted by me. We're a production of Lemonada Media. Catherine Barnes, Svia Baron Reinstein, and Chrissy Pease produce our show. Our mix is by James Sparber. Steve Nelson is the vice president of weekly content. Jessica Cordova Kramer, Stephanie Whittles Wax, and I are executive producers. Our theme was composed by Scylla Shaman with help from Johnny Vince Evans. You can find me at Real Sam B on Twitter and Instagram. Follow Choice Words wherever you get your podcasts or listen ad free on Amazon Music with your Prime membership. The new Stars series, Mary and George, starring Julianne Moore and Nicholas Galitzine, tells a story almost too outrageous to be true, but shockingly, it is. With next to nothing to her name and looking to elevate her social standing, Mary Villiers sets her handsome and charming son George on the path to seduce King James I and become his all-powerful lover. The show is full of wit, scandal, action. You won't be able to look away. Watch the season premiere of Mary and George now, only on Stars and the Stars app. When we made our McDonald's spicy chicken McNuggets, you were praise hands emoji. Then we ran out and you were streaming tears emoji. Now they're back, so you can be grinning face with sweat emoji. Order ahead on the McDonald's app. And get money mouth face emoji with two orders of crispy, irresistible 10-piece McNuggets, spicy or classic, for just $6. Limited time only. Prices and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer. Single item at regular price. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba.